Hello and welcome to Tea Time Roundup on PLUS TV Africa where the big stories live. Here is another week of fun-packed entertainment from your favorite celebrities. Do stay tuned because you don't want to miss this. My name is Ife Omai. It is with a heavy heart that I will have to start this episode with one of our saddest news of 2021. I mean, I haven't put on black for this story. And it's none other than the passing of the Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman. The news really shocked me, guys. And I'm sure it shocked the rest of the world as well. Um, so deeply. And it's not just because he died young or whatever, or that he was loved by many. But it's also for the fact that he had known that he was sick and was battling cancer on the low while he served us with all these fire performances. Talk about like a well nobled man. So rest in peace, my dearest Chadwick. Okay, let's move on to other matters um, that are in comparison, I must say, obviously flimsy. And that's the Big Brother Major housemates as Leko, Kidwire, Lucy, Nengi V and Tricky T being up for eviction have got people talking on Twitter. It's cool to see the Big Brother Niger organizers have kind of brought back the old style of putting the power in the hands of the fans to save their favorite housemates. So what do you think? Do you think, I mean, who's leaving? Is it Lucy or Nengi? Olekon or Kidwaya V? Chikiti, let me know, guys, what your thoughts are on that. Let me know. We also had a studio guest in the building who blessed us with a little something something. And that's none other than Terry Apala. I'm going to leave you with that. Do enjoy. I was sad. I was shook to my entire core. Because when I first saw four years, I was like, wait, Wakanda was in cancer. Mm -hmm. Every other, like, what's the other series? 21 was, Bridges. 21 Bridges was in cancer. Five like, God, five God. Five God. yeah. I'm like, what? Like, I was shocked. And I, I, I he did so much for the culture, so much. Um, and you can never stop talking about him if you're talking about black people and talking about the such such an impact that he left being the first superhero that had meaning that was in the forefront and everything. I think even him as a person was quite was quite dedicated to the community. He was he was such a pleasant soul. Mm. And I really wish that it was a lie that he didn't die like that. Yeah. But he knew and he I'm knew. glad that he knew um, because I feel like that would have obviously made him a lot more intentional about how he was living. There was an interview I saw where they were saying, okay, what about Black Panther? So he's like, I'm, gonna, I'm dead already. And then they asked me another question, I said, I'm dead already. They asked me another question, I said, I'm mm -hmm. dead. Then like, we don't watch it today. And I said, well, I'm serious, you know, I'm dead there, already. There are lots so of like, things. If you go back to listen to his interviews, yeah, he was saying yeah. that, it probably will make sense to a lot of people yeah. like this time. But now, it's beginning yeah. to make sense. I think and, and as then, much as, sorry, as much as it is really sad, I think he... Like he, since you, you already said he knew, so I think that made him understand the yeah. meaning of life, and mm. his life became a purpose for him. Yeah. So he had to do something. Lived, that, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm more inspired or more sad. Mm. So it's just in between, and I'm, I'm feeling everything at the same time, mm. and I just want to say. Thank you to him, mm. wherever he is. If he I, I like really that he us. lived. I like how the, the impact he had on mm. my personal life. A lot of my friends were calling, and one of my friends had a conversation and said, If I want to give you flowers while you're still alive, because we're all going to mm. die one day. Yeah. And I, I feel like that also shook me a, a little bit to be more intentional about my friends. Um, and even social media, like when he started losing weight, I'm not going to lie, I was like, Why is this guy losing so much weight? Um, I didn't think it was drugs, even though I saw that speculation on social media. I just thought, are you like trying to, I don't know, I don't know what it was. Um, and I think that for me also was an eye opener that I need to start being a lot more intentional about people. Like there's a lot of things that could be going on that people are dealing with that they don't know and maybe show my affection and show my my um, my love for people while they're still here because we're all going to go one day at least and we don't know when. So. I, you know, I'm hoping that I can be as intentional as he was. I like so the I fact that um, you touched on um, the fact that you don't know what demons everyone is dealing with. Everyone has a problem. Even the people with the brightest smile, the people with the sh best laughter are going through one pain or the other that you don't know about. So mm -hmm. it just says be kind to people. And it also tells me that I don't have an excuse. You don't have an excuse. You don't have an excuse to be great. If I'm mm -hmm. dying man, still putting all his efforts. Mm. What about me? 
that I still have my life. I don't know. I haven't gone for a proper medical checkup, but by God's grace, of course, I think I have a very good health, right? So if I have a very good health and um, I have everything at my feet, what is stopping me? If a dying man can do it. And you didn't know. I didn't know. We were watching this guy. He gave us one of the greatest movies that we'll ever talk about. And we didn't know that then it just shows that we have no excuse. So yo, to answer your question, I don't know if I'm more sad or motivated. Mm. I think I am more motivated because this man has shown the world True. that no matter what True. you're going through, you can conquer. Ah, but yeah. I think I'm actually more, guys. more motivated ah. as well. No, it's it's sad, sad. I wish he was here longer. I, there's yeah. so much more that mm. Chadwick could have done, so mm. much more. I, even with his wife that they got married secretly. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wish they had children. I wish they had something I, that... I'm beginning to think that not having children thing might have been a deliberate decision decision by mm. both of them knowing what he's going through but whatever it is i'm happy i'm happy he's getting the um tribute and respect he deserves from mm. every corner um for me i wish he was alive to enjoy his um superhero yeah. um, moments um longer because um, he actually worked to be there i mean uh, when i listened to his speech um regarding his um when the he went back to his university howard university yeah. and he was talking about how he was fired from his set because he was trying to talk about how black people were being portrayed and now he had the opportunity to represent black people in um, the <laughs> way he mm -hmm. he would love them to be portrayed. And, he never and, did and no stereotype. And didn't stay so long. And I like how he was really intentional about the roles he played. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, he wanted the, the... Everybody wants to have a role. Actually, if that is your job, you want to have a, a role. But when you go the extra mile to say, I'm not going to play this role because it so doesn't align less. with mm -hmm. my um, beliefs and values, then... It, it takes a lot of rejection, a lot of, oh, mm, leave that person on this side, but you still have to stay the course, right? Mm. So, I mean, I'm inspired and rest in power is what I have to say. Mm. Yeah. Agreed. What's it called now? And who they think, and if they think it's a negative influence and all of that. And a lot of people, after, I think after Sunday, it had a lot of effect on me. They said, with the way things are right now, I can't predict the winner. Mm. Okay, I can tell you Prince today now, but by Sunday, Prince is out. Yeah, I think if you were we going know. to pr predict, I think it's with, it would be easier to predict, predict the last four. Mm. Not, not who will yeah. be winning the yeah. money. And there's a lot of... There's a lot of um, Twist and turns. Yeah, and a lot of factors are considered on lock as well, mm -hmm. so it's hard to be able to do that. So what do you think about um, Kid and what I was gonna say. I knew mm -hmm. that Kid was going to be up for eviction because he's not the greatest communicator, especially when it comes to mass communication. Like, when he starts to talk to the masses, the way he... What's the word? The way he can be a bit blunt. Someone said on Twitter that, oh, he's not rude, he's just rich. I'm sorry for yourself. He's rude, period. So I, I was I was very sure that he was going to be up for eviction. I dare to defer, but then, though. Um, but then, what's it called? The, the category of people that are there, I think it's now getting a lot easier to now tell who's going to go home. Because I know Kid and Nengi are most likely safe. Um, so Did you see where Kid on. was on the graphics mm. last week? <laughs> no, but now that he's up for eviction, okay, and, you think they're, that people, and they're people telling us effort, to save, right? uh, come on. And besides, he's rich. Yeah, so it's not yeah, as the money is the problem. And there's no way. Well, at least I know Leko is safe because he has, I don't know how Leko he gathered those fans. I don't v know what they see in him, but V is not safe. He's but safe. V's people are, have energy. Even though this week already, it's only Tuesday, they've been they've been coming out to confess that, yes, this baby is a bit too much because she's too much in her feeling. So I don't know if they're going to ramp up. She can't take it. what she dishes. No, she really can't. And it's very pissing. Um, and maybe Tricky T. Tricky T has been doing well too in terms of like gathering new he's fans. Improved. I yeah. think he'll be going really home. Improved. But I think he's going home. I think I'll, I'll put my money on V and Tricky T. But I'm, 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 I'm I won't put my survive. money on anyone, but I dare to differ when it comes to what people are saying about um, Kid? Kid Wire that mm -hmm. um, is, is very rude. I don't think it's you watch rude. the show. Are you sure you watch the show? Have you not seen the money on the head of house? Abby, uh, so what, what was so, he did that you thought saw as rude? You know what? A lot of people have problems with when you're in a position of power and they think because you make certain decisions or because you feel like we're peers, I have to kiss your behind. Because, mm, preach it. <laughs> do you understand? Mm. I don't have to kiss your behind <laughs> because we're peers. If I'm in a position of power, I, I would have to make some 
decisions that would not sit well with everyone. But this has and it's to do okay. With, this has nothing to do no, with no, I'm coming. Hold on, hold okay. on. And and it's okay not to not not to for it not to sit well with everyone. Mm. But at the same time, it's also okay for you to express yourself in the best way you think possible without caring whose guts is hurt or whose feelings is hurt. Sometimes you need to put people, but sometimes you also need to communicate certain things to people in a certain way for you to get into their ticks. So you're not waiting, you're not even letting her answer my question. I mean, I just want her to give one. Like instance not, where the, the way he handled it or the way he spoke uh, there's to someone. Too many and I, I, don't, I can't remember one particular thing uh -uh. now. It's usually we paraphrasing his words and I don't want to speak for him. But when he was head of house, mm -hmm. I watched it because he was head of house with Eric and I like Eric. And I was just thought like, okay, this guy, there's some too many things. But I'm going to say this though. Be, yeah, no, first of all, um, Kid Rai is not the first person to have been head of house who so exudes power. So if your excuse of being lousy with your mouth is because you have power I, for me that just you you in a way you lack immaturity the, the i think there's more effort in being careful with uh, making the making the um, necessary decisions to exude yourself with level of authority that doesn't have to be disrespectful plain disrespectful i don't think it was that bad and a lot of them were quite insensitive but i mean a lot of them were quite sensitive but he was a bit rude and like i said yeah, but I, I think the why that if you if you're using the word rude and lousy for someone and saying that person has been that a lot of the time no, like, don't, I said that <laughs> You used I said that just now. He's been yeah. that a lot of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said when he was head of house, one week, guys. But you said it's so rude. that was the only period that he yeah, was really that's allowed what I'm saying. That's okay. what I'm saying. Uh, listen, but, guys, but it's I'm saying, too, right? No, listen, this is not even a personal opinion. I'm saying I'm so I'm not surprised that what's it called? He's up for eviction because of what happened okay. when he was head of house. Make the money in I'm calling now. That's everybody good to arrive Who dream for like I'm on Fresh fine boy, I'm looking on I'm feeling the feeling this Champagne and the very young My car ain't fixed That is a point I need Yo, man Lost in Lando What's good, babies? We good Hi, hi Girls are looking so pretty, man so what's the inspiration behind it, feeling fly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, feeling fly. Feeling fly is just, you know, just talking about, you know, you know, like people always think, you know, an Apalati should always be on, you know, Adire, Agbada, mm. whatever. So I'm just trying to let them know, okay, as an Apalati, you can also do your bling bling, hip hop, mm. whatever, whatever, and a billion level mixed together. So you get so feeling fly on my bands, you know, I don't know if you're putting on gold, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're driving bands, you know. I like that, and I, I think the, the the producer, the person behind the yeah, beat, also banks, yeah, banks, yeah. yeah, I think he also got that vibe because it, it was hard. Mm -hmm. He was going hard on the beat as well. But I wanted to ask though, like yeah. obviously you're not a small boy in this industry. Um, how do you maintain, well, let's say, that level of inspiration to keep on going at it? You know, like sometimes I feel like people get very lazy and the sound just has to get a bit. Mm. But you know, you are, music is not like that. So what's yeah. keeping you from still having fresh sound and still being able to get all the sorts of inspirations that are different? Because your songs are quite different, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, it's still you. So how are you doing that? Yeah, um, where, um, where, first of all, yeah, my kind of music, the kind of music I do, I play hip hop, mm. um, stick with me, because I don't want to say I'm the only one doing Apala hip hop music. Yeah, I think I'm the only one doing Apala hip hop music. Right. So that keeps me in the industry. Like, I've been in the game for five, six years officially. Mm -hmm. But trust me, my kind of music, I just think um, they're not ready for the sound yet. And most people always say, I tell you, is underrated. I think I'm underrated because. I'm the only one doing Apala hip hop music. Mm. Right. Maybe if I was singing like, you know, Whiskey and others, mm. maybe, eh. Hey. But on this level that I am, for me, it's not enough for me. But trust me, 2020, 2020, though this EP, I was meant to drop a song featuring Bonner Boy. Mm. Should get yeah, we're too. going to get to that. What happened? I mean, we're vibed on this yeah, table, um, talking yeah. about it, waiting yeah, um, for it. What happened? Yeah, well, there's an issue, like, um, I had an issue with, you know, with his management, like, okay. you know, they said Bonner Boy has, you know, a lot of project to drop 2020, so they, they felt I should just chill okay. and wait for them because they don't like they wouldn't like whereby I would drop the song and Bonaboy would we'll not promote the song. So, oh, cool then. so I'm just chilling. So while I was waiting for them to you know come up with their own plans, you know, I had to just you know give them Do something. something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, the Apala thing. Yeah. Please educate Apala, me. Apala. 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 <laughs> <laughs> educate yeah. me more on that. Yeah. What? How did you find yourself in that in that stream of? Yeah. Music? Um, 
Yeah, the old sound I am a pop music thing started from you know where I grew up from, Emushi. Yeah, Mushi is a rural environment, you know, where you find more of the, you know, local people, mm. paraga joints, you know, weed smokers, all sort of stuff. So, and the kind of sound that influenced my kind of music, Akpala hip hop music. Can you give us names like of people? Yeah, that um, likes of um, Legali Mukaiba, mm. um, Aruno Isholai, Sufala, Tunji. Mm. And aside from the Akpala artists, you know, I listen to some other, you know, like, likes so of um, Angelico Kijo, Papa mm. Wemba, Mary Makeba, mm. you know, African music, you know. I love anything that's with Africa means that is me for you. So mm. before I started Zoak Palatin, I said to God, I said, God, I really want to do something different from mm. what others are doing. And God gave it to me. Mm. This is the Akpala hip hop music. So okay. I'm now. So sometimes people will just come and say, Baba, this is a kind of music. Um, are you sure people trust me? God's time is the best when it's my own time. Mm. Yeah. The last time we had you on this table, you said that your your major audience or those who really vibe to your song are not even Nigerians. Yeah, sure. Mm. Has it, has there been any changes then? Yeah, um, like even up to now, yeah, because the last time I checked um my streaming and wherever, like from the old countries that I've been seeing so far, from Mar uh, Mauritius, you know, mm -hmm. Russia, mm -hmm. you know, those places, there are fans in Nigeria, but compared to you know, oh, fans sorry, in London, yeah. mm -hmm. they are much, much more than, than him. But Why do you think me, that is? Like, cause I don't know, maybe because um, the industry is, you know, full of, you know, the shaku shaku. I don't understand mm -hmm. mentioning names. Yeah, yeah, true. No, 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 that's what I think, though, mm -hmm. you know. So you're not really importing your sound? Ninja, you know, in Ninja, mm -hmm. they really want to dance, you know. Right. Yeah, they really want to vibe, they want to dance, they want to have fun. Mm -hmm. But... In terms of good music, I think they are not ready. Because we have other, apart from me, there are other artists Different that are supposed sounds. to be on that, you know, that big level that we're yeah. not seeing today. We have Brimo, we have Black Magic, you know, mm -hmm. likes of them like that. So, yeah. so I believe yeah. everything is time, everything is not time, only time mm -hmm. well, comes. Uh, Brimo will tell you that he's the biggest thing since, he, biggest thing. Yeah, so, and uh, I, don't know, I don't know if he agrees with, with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would that one thing be if, like, that would like to say stopping you, but like if you had that superpower, then you could do more with your music and your brand and everything. What would that one thing be? Yeah, what I need now is just a very good, strong, like strong management. Because mm. even if you're singing rubbish, if you have a very good management, <laughs> yeah, if you have a, yeah even if you're singing rubbish, if you have a good management, mm. trust me. I don't understand mentioning names. You know, there, there are other artists Mission. out there. No, 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 hey. Don't put me on that. So you're looking for basically you want like, collaboration with um, management and established platforms. Yeah, trust mm. me. Like yeah, okay. What I think the problem is on my own piece, mm. strong management. Because mm. I have the sound already. Like I've done a lot of you know international collaborations. Yeah. Like Good like yourself. I said the last time I came for the show, I said I have a song with Jihos, Kida yeah. Kuz, mm. Bonner Boy, many of them like that. So how do song I like? I just feel it's not a time for me to bring out those songs because. I wouldn't want to bring out those songs now and, you know, maybe to push it the way get. It So I'm just trying it. to, you know, get funds, you know, because it's class capital. Dwayne Johnson took to social media to share to the world that him, his wife, and his kids had caught the coronavirus. And he broke it down in details. Pretty much everything any fan that was concerned would like to know. And if I mentioned while we're having this conversation, the Nigerian celebrities should kind of take a cue from this because. Uh, what I see that's happening on, on media now, in social media now, is Nigerian celebrities giving us this performative, mysterious public um, announcement thing that doesn't really give that much information, giving it space for doubts, really. So I have to sit with Ife Oshunke on this one. Moving on, we also had the Big Brother Niger evicted housemates. You know, they always stop by in the studio because that's what we do. And Ife Lua Oshunke went as far as even testing Brighto and the others on current affairs knowledge. The content, guys, that I signed up for. Content. Take a look. Why is it that when um, Nigerian celebrities come out to speak about their COVID-19, we don't take them late. seriously? Do you see how this guy gave us detail for the Thank world? You. Like, he gave us every... He, he broke it down. He told you some of the challenges he faced. He told you some of the things he faced mentally, emotionally, mm. as a father. And I think you know? they also faced peculiar to their own family, um, not playing understand? to the gallery. Do you understand? Like, he gave you everything. So there's, how, how on earth would I look at this and be like, if, if, it's, if it's not true, then it's great acting, Oscar, Oscar deserving, actually. Do you understand? Because I just feel like that's the same 
thing that Nigerians need to take a toll from or take a cue from and learn from that when you need to speak about things that affect people worldwide, you need to show more emotions, you need to give more information and don't be holding back on certain things. So I appreciate the way he came out to talk about it and the advice that he gave to everyone out there about how to keep safe, how their different um, um, peculiarities to certain people that have mm -hmm. the virus and all that. So it's amazing and I just want that and I hope this just serves as a point of contact to everyone who still feels like there's no COVID-19. It, it is still there. People are still getting it. Is it still as rampant as it was? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Is it still as scary as it was? Maybe not because yes, I can remember the still pandemonium. Anyway, yeah, it is still so. dangerous but you know, the fear, the mm. fear at the beginning. Now we know we're beginning to make progress one way or another. Mm -hmm. You know it is not a death sentence anymore. You know back then we used to think like once you have it, you're going to die for sure. But right now I think people are beginning to get more educated. People are beginning to get more aware. Mm. But are we still keeping safe? I do not think so, which is why I like the fact that he said wear your mask. He still told you the things to do to still get out of this. So it's amazing and um, big shout out to the Johnson families, and um, I'm glad they're safe and healthy now. Yeah, I'm definitely glad they're safe. And um, so he says they're in a good place now, health-wise, so I'm glad. I mean, the place that got me laughing was when he said he was, he's been broke as well sometime. Yeah. More but I just times. want to reiterate what he has said, which is boost <clears throat> your immune system. I, mm. I've said that over and over again. If you felt my was on this table, she would definitely laugh. Boost your immune system. Wear your face masks live a healthy life like do everything possible to ensure that your immune system is on a top mm. notch now that includes eating healthy of course your vegetables your um, um fruits and all that and also i mean one vitamin thing, c's well, yeah one thing they also say is when they ask you to eat healthy this is expensive i don't think it's as expensive as people make it out to mm -hmm. be it is when you want to eat the food of 10 people at the same time that is when it becomes expensive and i don't think that's a healthy lifestyle mm. anyway so i think we should I'll actually just take a step back, think of what we are eating. Are you just eating rice and loading rice and then at the end of the day you eat one small piece of you meat? You can load eating. rice, but how do you mix up your rice? Do you mix up your rice so with veggies and I think we should, all? I mean, immune boosters, vitamin C, um, um, what's this thing, what's they call the... Um, Oh, the su supplements, yeah. Mm. Take a lot of supplements and just be ready. Wash your hands, wear your face masks, and be ready to fight it when it comes. That's if it comes. I'm just saying, yeah. So that's basically it for me. And of course, I'm happy for his family. Like he said, people have lost loved ones. So it's mm. something that we need to be very sensitive about. And I like that you also touched about the difference between how the celebrities come out over there talk about their own case when they encounter COVID-19 and how our own here, it feels like, mm, I just want to make the news anyway. So there is a huge difference. So forgive us when we probably don't believe you. Yeah. And I mean, moving, moving on, um, you also talked about it um, not being as rampant anymore, but you know, the dangerousness, if there's a word like that, of this disease has to do with whatever it meets in your own system. Mm. So it could, I could have the disease and um, I get better maybe mm. I have a good immune system. And the next person who we thought is actually okay and has, has a good um, health um, health care or health system might not be able to survive it. And mm. it, it, the person could get it based on my own carelessness. Mm -hmm. So because of that reason, because of the fact that how this, you can't predict how this virus is going to react in somebody else's body is why sure. we still need to be very careful. And that is why it's still very dangerous to me as a person. So um, I just to all of us. I really hope we get to that point where we can say COVID-19 is gone. And How I know it will happen. I know it will happen. Question. I mean, we beat wild polio, so yeah, we'll do this one. Yeah? I will last you there. All right, so um, we can't have this conversation without talking about your relationship with Watoni. So was that something genuine? Did you feel like you had to be in a relationship or you actually felt something for Watoni? Because um, uh, in our words, you're not so ticklish anymore. <laughs> <laughs> of course, before, before, before going to the house, I had no intention of going into any relationship in the house. So mm. I think that was why I was laid back. Mm. Do you understand? So I didn't want to like, get involved in any relationship. I was just very close to her, like very, very close because we have um, deep conversations most of the time. So that's it. But outside the house, you never can tell something might as well happen. But while in the house, no intention for any relationship. 
All right. So Ebuka asked you a question during one of the eviction shows about what you said, what you were telling Kidwaya about um, Neo, about him not being real, pretending and all of that. And you outrightly denied it. I'm sure by now you must have seen the clips going around of you actually saying those words to Kidwaya. So why did you deny? Why did you feel the need to deny it at that moment? No, the thing is, when, when Ebuka asked you the question to me, I, I was confused. Like, he said it like gossiping. I was like, oh, was that a gossip? I've never gossiped this guy before because it was after the show I had to recall and I was like, okay, it was a conversation I had with Kid Wire. And I, I called um, Neo and I had a conversation with him. I explained everything to him and we were cool. So what I said was, um, I was telling um, Kid Wire that this guy is not, uh, I don't think he's small. Like in the house, is like letting us know that he's small, but I think outside the house he's big. Do you mm. understand? So it's just very simple, from 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 a good angle, not from a bad angle. So that was why I uh, denied what Sibuka was asking me. Then do you understand? Yeah. Yes. All right. So let's take it outside the show because obviously you, I'm sure by now you know that Dorothy was kind of interested in you, right? So let's take it outside the house. If you have to pick between Watoni and Dorothy, what would it be? Outside the house. Okay, right, like right, right now. Right, right now. I think I will need time to think about that. But I think, I like, as you all know, I'm, I'm closer to, um, to Wathoni. Mm. Dorothy is a very good person. Like I love her energy and her vibes and everything. She's the most funniest, um, funniest um, female housemate. So whenever we her, we laugh. We just that's why whenever we're playing games, do you understand? But for Wathoni, I think we talk more. We have um, we had deep conversations. So that was why I was um, attached to Wathoni then. Um, Dorothy. But right now, asking me that question, man, I'm not going to pick anyone, man. All right, so we have <laughs> to dig into some of your Lord Billish wisdom because uh, we saw a live video recently between Kid Wire's dad and um, a popular publisher, Kip Daily Momodo, and it kind of seemed or he gave off a vibe like they're planning their wedding already, and you know, Twitter people are already buying a show, be and price, and you know, what's your take on Kid Wire and Erica's relationship? Do you think it's genuine? Do you think it's something that will stand the test of time? Well, um, of course, it has um, everything it, it takes to stand the test of time. So when they come out, they, if they want to continue, they can continue. They don't want so you don't think it's a game? You don't think they're just doing all of this for the camera? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. When I was there, I wasn't doing anything for the game. I was just being myself. So I don't think anybody should, as a matter of fact, do anything for, for the game. Do you understand? So when they're out, they can decide to hook up and they can decide to like, split. So it depends on all of them. I hate to say it, but that is a wrap on today's episode. If you did enjoy these topics as much as I did, you can catch some of our episodes of Tea Time that you have missed on our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also catch the Tea Time crew live on Monday to Friday at 10.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. on DSTV channel 408 across Africa. Once again, it is your girl, Ife Omai. Thank you for watching.